The model penal code is in many ways the brainchild of Herbert Wexler of Columbia Law School. Its choice of evils justification defense was a daring innovation. Recall that it involves a balancing of two factors. One, the harm or evil sought to be avoided by the actor against the harm or evil sought to be prevented by the law. In short, if the actor broke the law to avoid a worse result, then she should have a defense. We encountered the affirmative defense of necessity in one of our earliest meetings when we read Regina versus Dudley and Stephen, the castaway open boat cannibalism case. Dudley and Stephen were sentenced to hang. Would they have been able to raise a choice of evils defense under the model penal code? Recall that the examples given in the commentary all involved crimes other than homicide. The comment goes on, however, to say, it would be particularly unfortunate to exclude homicidal conduct from the scope of the defense if the actor has effected a net saving of innocent lives. Well, Dudley and Stephen took one innocent life and saved three, a net saving of two innocent lives. Most persons probably think a net saving of lives is ethically warranted if the choice among lives to be saved is not unfair. Certainly the law should permit such a choice. We might need some time to think about how to decide fairly which life or lives to take and which to save. In the circumstances of Dudley and Stephen, it made some sense to sacrifice Parker, the cabin boy. He had been drinking seawater and was the one nearest death. And what was the alternative? Draw straws? Kill Dudley and have Stephen feed pieces of Dudley to Parker? Makes no sense. Anyway, the claim on which the MPC proposal rests is that most persons probably think a net saving of lives can justify a homicide that is not justifiable otherwise, say is self-defense. Is this what most people think? It's what Herbert Wexler and the American Law Institute thought in 1962. Is it what you think? In 1967, the philosopher Philippa Foote explained the thought with this now famous example. A runaway trolley will run over and kill five innocent people unless it is diverted onto a sidetrack where it will kill one innocent person. All are innocent. Stipulate that. Here's where you come in. You can easily throw a switch that will divert the trolley, saving five lives at the cost of one. Would it be wrong of you to throw the switch? Would it be wrong of you not to? This is what has come to be known as the trolley problem. Let's visualize this. There's the trolley hurtling down the tracks. It will kill the five innocents who are stuck on the track unless you act. You can easily divert the trolley onto the side track, saving five lives. Unfortunately, there is an innocent person on the side track who will be killed if, but only if, you throw the switch. Is it a crime to throw the switch? Hit pause if you need to. But if you work through the elements of murder, you'll see that if you throw the switch, you will have knowingly caused the death of a person. It's not self-defense. It's not defense of, the, of another. The one on the sidetrack is not attacking the five on the main line. It's no crime not to throw the switch. You have no legal duty not to omit to save the five. Here's where a choice of evil's defense would come in, if it were recognized. By throwing the switch, you would be affecting a net savings of, five, of four lives. Bravo you, right? Then in 1986, along comes another philosopher, Judy Thompson, who posed this twist on the trolley problem. This is the so-called roller skates variation on the trolley problem. A runaway trolley will run over and kill five innocent people unless a big guy on roller skates is pushed onto the track, killing that one innocent person. It's the same as trolley, except there's no switch you can pull and no sidetrack with someone on it. 
Instead, there's the big guy on roller skates. He's just big enough to stop the trolley short of the five other innocents. You can easily shove the big guy into the path of the trolley, saving five lives at the cost of one. Let's visualize this. Again, if you act, you commit murder. But, as in trolley, you affect a net saving of innocent lives. You sacrifice one life to save five. Should you be able to raise a choice of evils defense? The MPC and Professor Wexler say yes, but most persons might begin to have doubts. Why? Why not treat the two cases the same way? After all, they're basically alike. In both cases, one person is killed to save five others with a net saving of four innocent lives. Surely the law should permit the choice in both cases, no? Surveys and studies reveal that although most people indeed would permit the choice in trolley, they are not so sure they would in roller skates. And consider this case. A surgeon has five patients awaiting transplants. They will soon die as no organs are available. The surgeon can harvest the needed organs from an unsuspecting healthy person without anyone finding out. The unwitting donor will die. Is the surgeon justified in harvesting the organs? Very few people think the surgeon should be acquitted for doing this. But again, there is a net savings of innocent lives. Somehow, Herbert Wexler got the American Law Institute to agree to the proposition that the numerical preponderance in the lives saved compared to those sacrificed should surely establish legal justification for the act. Further reflection makes this bold claim hard to swallow. Is it only because there's a death? I don't think so. Consider this variation on the surgeon case. A surgeon has five patients awaiting transplants. They will soon die as no organs are available. The surgeon can harvest the needed organs, a kidney, portions of the pancreas, portions of the liver, sections of intestine, from an unsuspecting, healthy person without anyone finding out. The unwitting donor will survive without major impairment. Is the surgeon justified in harvesting the organs? The near consensus opinion is that this conduct is not justifiable. The reason is well expressed by yet another philosopher, John Rawls. Each person possesses it an inviolability founded on justice that even the welfare of the society as a whole cannot override. The model penal code choice of evils defense made a cameo appearance in the notorious Bybee Memorandum created during the George W. Bush administration to justify the use of torture in interrogations in the War on Terror, but it has not fared well in legislatures or the courts. As summarized by Professor Michael Hofheimer, today the model penal code necessity defense is bad law that should not be cited without significant qualification as the basis for legal advice in any American jurisdiction. Or in the words of the poet John Milton, quoted in Dudley and Stephen, so spake the fiend, and with necessity the tyrant's plea excused his devilish deeds. <laughs>